Percy's Promise is the second episode of the third series, and based off of the story of the same name from the Railway series book, Percy the Small Engine. This is an episode that was originally planned to be part of the second series of the show, but was pushed to the third. And I'll go through my theory on why this was after I read the, through the story. Every summer, Sodor is busy with holidaymakers visiting the island to see the sights. One morning, Thomas is running along the coastal branch line, taking children to the beach. When he reaches the station at the port, he meets Percy who is bringing stone trucks to the harbour. Percy greets Thomas and remarks that he wishes he could take children, to which Thomas says that the children he has taken are the vicar's Sunday school. He will also be busy in the evening, but offers them to let Percy take the children back home, which he gladly promises to do. At Dryor, Percy meets Harold who warns him of bad weather coming and says to take care. He is also warned by Edward at the junction station to be careful of an oncoming storm, but Percy knows that he must keep his promise. The children enjoy a fun day at the beach until tea time, at which the weather turns bad and begins raining hard. Percy returns to the port station, where Annie and Clarabelle are waiting for him to take the children home. Percy is most uncomfortable with the rain, but despite his longing to be at the sheds, he manages to get on with it. As Percy begins his return journey, he leaves the coastal village and enters the countryside. Percy struggles to see through the beaten rain, but worse is to come. The tracks ahead have been flooded and Percy winds up in the middle of the floodwaters. His fire is dampened as the water floods into his cab. His crew then tries to find some dry firewood and his fireman asks the guard for some floorboards from his van. The guard grumbles since he had only swept the floor earlier that morning, but still agrees to help. Percy's fire is soon burning well and he feels more comfortable again until he sees Howard approaching and worries that he wants to laugh at him. A crate attached to a parachute is dropped out and thuds on top of Percy's boiler, to his annoyance. His driver explains Howard bought hot drinks for the crew and passengers. Percy then thanks Howard before the helicopter flies away. Percy bravely continues on with his journey, and though he begins losing steam again, he keeps going. He finally reaches tracks clear of the flood and triumphantly brings the train to Ellsbridge. Thomas is waiting for him and congratulates him for keeping his promise. The Fat Controller arrives aboard Howells and thanks Percy and his crew. The Fat Controller is greatly impressed with Percy's efforts and praises him for being a really useful engine. As I mentioned, this episode was originally planned to be in the second series, but was pushed back to the third series. I assume this decision was made because the team probably would have found it hard to put an engine deep in water without badly damaging the model, since they were still learning how to use the models at the time and how to do stuff without permanently damaging their models and replacing them which would have cost a lot of money. But since David Mitten had worked on tugs prior to this series, it gave him a lot more experience with the models and how to get them into water without badly damaging them. And we all know that this episode brings up a continuity error since Percy talks about it in Percy Takes the Plunge in the second series. But you could make the argument that this is probably a flashback episode that takes place during series 2, but whatever way you want to look at it, you can't deny that this is a great episode for the TV series. It really pushes the boundaries of what the team could do with their models at the time. Making the actual range show up at the model sets is just astounding. It looked astounding back then and it still looks astounding today. In the original story and the first script of the episode, the floorboards actually came from Clarabelle. A non-sentient brake fan was added in the final adaption to avoid the implication that the guard was using an axe on the sentient coach, because, you know, it's a kid show. And I find it hilarious the way the guard grumbled about having to take some of the floorboards out in his brake fan. Percy's driver and fireman had to find some more firewood. I'll have some of your floorboards, please, said the fireman to the guard. I only swept the floor this morning, grumbled the guard. But he still helped. <sighs> what a great guy. This episode also sees improvements to Howard the Helicopter's model, since he had two sets of blades in the second series. One set for when he was stationary and when he was about to take off, and another set of blades that are just circles spinning around when he was flying. But here he just has the one set of propellers that's used for when he's stationary and when he's flying. That's a big improvement from the previous model of Howard. And the bad weather music in this episode is just phenomenal. Michael Donner and Junior Campbell once again up their game for this episode.
and over the years it's become one of the most iconic themes in the TV series, being recreated several times by YouTube users. It's just another one of those episodes that pops into people's minds first whenever they talk about the TV series and the franchise as a whole. Percy's Promise is another one of those episodes that's a real highlight for the series. It has a great atmosphere to it, a great dilemma for Percy to go through, and it really does prove Percy's theory from the second series that water is nothing to an engine with determination. It's an episode that's sure to cheer you up if you're having a bad weather day. So check it out if you haven't seen it for a while, and you'll get a lot of enjoyment and thrills out of it.